Welcome to the Innovation and Compliance Podcast, part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Join us every week as we talk with industry innovators who are making compliance to help business run more efficiently and at the end of the day, more profitably. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back for another episode. And you're in for a real treat today because we take things in what may seem to be a fairly different direction. But at the end of the day, it's really about innovation and it's about the process by which you not only innovate, but you move forward with whatever it is you are working on. And I know with that cryptic introduction, first of all, I'd like to introduce Ben Adelberg. Ben, thank you for taking the time to visit with me today. Tom, thanks so much for the invitation. Can't wait. So Ben and I met at a recent podcast conference called PodFast Expo 2019, and he had a extraordinarily interesting podcast that he told me about, but I was even more interested in the process he goes through, the preparation he goes through, and then after he has made the recording and produced the podcast, how he distributes it really through a plethora of social media channels that I found, frankly, just outstanding. So, Ben, you have the Back of the Range podcast. Can you start off by telling us why you created it? why you're so passionate about not only golf, but really telling the stories that you tell on this podcast. Absolutely. Well, you know, just to give a little bit of intro and background on myself. So I've been playing competitive amateur golf down here in South Florida, probably for about 20 years. I played collegiately at St. Thomas University in Miami and you know, I've been playing ever since. And I guess things really started back around in 2017. I was at a tournament in Fort Myers, Florida, and it was just a brutal rain out. The entire tournament itself was actually rained out. And a lot of us were just sitting around having a beer, just talking about things. And someone had already put the idea of a golf podcast in my mind. But I thought, you know, what can I do to really contribute? And, you know, how would my podcast stand out differently than the golf media at large, whether it's magazines or TV or standard newspaper articles, you know, what would my idea of a golf podcast, how would that be different? And I just was looking around at the people that I was having a beer with. And a lot of them were very established amateurs in the game, very um, established or maybe professionals that had recently got their amateur status back. And just guys that I looked up to that had played in over 20 or 30 USGA championships or have really accomplished a lot of great things, but their stories maybe weren't being shared on Golf Central or the Golf Channel or an ESPN. But, you know, stories, you find great stories in any walk of life. Maybe they're not, you know, at the top of the world rankings, but they're great stories. So I started talking to these guys. They said, hey, what would you think if I started a podcast where we just kind of told some stories and highlighted some amateur golfers? And you just shared some of that. And, you know, fortunately, they thought it was a great idea. And kind of things got started from there very humbly. Just I kind of got out a sheet of paper and wrote down a bunch of names of guys and women that I've played golf with over the years and thought they would have a great story to share. And before you knew it, the list went to 20 names to 30 names. And I just said, well, and on January 3rd, it's kind of the day that it launched on January 3rd of 2018, that's going to be my first episode. And I'm going to do 52 episodes in 52 weeks. And I was able to do that and it's actually been going strong ever since. So I'm not sure when this episode will post, but I know that in a couple of days, my 68th episode will post for the back of the range. And it's uh, been going strong ever since. So you've had been a wide variety of golfers, what I would say is a famous sportscaster. You've had golf coaches. You have had the world's most famous streaker. Just a, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a fun episode. <laughs> a wide variety of people. But what intrigued me, frankly, was your approach. And some of these golfers are famous and known to people like myself who don't particularly follow golf too much anymore. But others are known really more in the golf community. How do you prepare for sure. such a wide variety of uh, guests? I think the first thing that I try and do is I will get a baseline knowledge of their career, their origins in the game and really do a big deep dive and get as many facts straight and will actually get all my facts straight before I ever get them on the phone. So whether that means going to, if they're a college coach, I will go to the university athletics website and they have a great write-up usually of any sort of a college player or a college coach. 
if they played professionally, I'll go check out their victories or their finishes or all of their stats. I'll even do a dive on anything I can find, whether it's going to perhaps their own personal website or their Facebook page or their Instagram. I'll read through their Twitter accounts. I will basically, for lack of a better term, I will do a very deep dive and stalking, so to speak, on the internet and find out every single thing I can find out about them that could potentially lead me into different and unique questions that maybe they're not used to experiencing. So I guess my strategy and how I prepare is I would like to go through the entire episode and ask questions that they've never been asked. Now, it's, maybe it's a lofty goal, but they've been gracious enough to spend you know an hour with me speaking and telling stories. I want to make it fun for my guests. And the last thing I want to do is give them questions or take them in directions that they're used to being you know, asked. You know, I don't want to put them in a spot where they've been at over and over again. So Ben, I just took a brief look at the number of golf podcasts today, and I don't pretend to know how many there are, but they're multiple. And this process that you've detailed, is that one of the things that you think helps make your podcast stand out? for not only the golfing pro and the golfing amateur, but really anyone with a passion about golf? I think if you have a passion about golf and you want to hear stories, then it's an excellent podcast. Personally, I think why it's been so successful. A lot of podcasts that I've seen pop up that are around the game of golf, you know, maybe one guy or a guy and a lady or two guys just talking about their own experiences, whether or not they're saying, well, I played this weekend and boy, I had fun and I broke 80 and that was great. And then maybe they'll talk about the latest PGA championship and say, well, this is why Tiger won. And I think this is why Phil Mickelson won't win the U.S. Open. They're just kind of giving their thoughts and concepts at large. I kind of stay away from that because I don't know how unique I'm going to be. Everyone has an opinion about Tiger Woods or about Jack Nicklaus or about Phil Mickelson. I'm using my time and the brief time that I have my listeners' attention. I want to tell the stories of these guests that I've had on my podcast, whether it's a a network administrator that works for Hilton that gets a call from the USGA saying you're in as an alternate to play in the U.S. Senior Open, and oh, by the way, you're going to be playing with Fred Couples and Tom Watson, or if it's a women's mid amateur or even a streaker from Liverpool. You know, they're giving me their time. I want to share their stories I think that's why the back of the range is a little bit unique. Ben, the other thing that really impressed me about your overall social media presence is it didn't stop with podcasts. And I might even say that the podcast is really the start of the way you publicized your guests, their stories, and really everything about this. Could you explain to our listeners who may not be familiar with some of the other tools? They've probably heard of YouTube, but they may not be familiar with Instagram. They may not be familiar with the various techniques you use to publicize each podcast. Sure. Well, I think you're absolutely right. Just building the podcast or posting it or publishing the podcast, that's half the job. It could be the best episode, the most entertaining episode, but if nobody really knows about it, it's just going to kind of sit there. So for every single episode, obviously, I use, I have a Facebook page, I have a Twitter page, I have an Instagram page, and I have every single episode being uploaded to YouTube as well. And I use One of the methods that I use is I will take a snippet of one of my episodes, whether it's a minute long or 30 seconds, but I will find some nice audio of an interesting clip of a particular story within the episode that is a nice 60-second clip, and I will take that and transform it into what's called an audiogram. And that's basically just a picture with, you're creating your own video, so to speak, but it's a static picture with audio over it. And then I will take that and post it to Instagram stories or in my Instagram feed, or I'll post it to Twitter and I'll put the link to the episode once it's there. So I'm constantly putting it out on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on all of these social media channels. And a lot of times what I'll also do is I will make sure I tag the person that the episode is featuring, but then also if they're mentioning someone else in that snippet, then I will tag that person as well. So if you'd like me to give you an example of that, last year I had Coach Alan Bratton of Oklahoma State University. He's the head coach of the men's team that won the national championship. 
And one of the things they were able to do last year is they were able to take the team to South Florida to visit one of their alums, Ricky Fowler, who used to play at Oklahoma State. And in that conversation, I have Coach Alan Bratton mentioning some of his players, mentioning Ricky Fowler, talking about some of the other alums like Brad Gale or Kevin Tway or Morgan Hoffman. These are all well-known PGA Tour players. Well, I took that 60-second clip, posted it to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and then tagged all of those people that were mentioned. That way, it shows up in anyone following those feeds, and you're just increasing your reach by just taking a little bit of time and thinking your way through, how can I get this 60-second clip to as many people as possible? So that's one of the methods that I've used. So I know that sounded sort of technically advanced, <laughs> yeah. but for yeah, those who are listening to this, he showed me how to do this in less than five minutes on his cell phone. I mean, yeah. he had the tools and he had the apps, but ladies and gentlemen, the types of tools that are available to you literally to tell your story are almost innumerable. And that was really the other thing that struck me so much about you, Ben, is that you're using these tools. Literally, you showed me how to do one in five minutes and that visual picture, that quote, that image that you were able to put out on the other social media channels, frankly, I thought was as powerful a tool to drive traffic to the Back of the Range podcast as about anything I've seen. Well, I think you have to leverage these tools and you have to, we're all in the business of, you're trying to get attention. You're trying to capture people's attention. And if I just put a post up that says, hey, click on this link, well, I'm not really giving a big reason to my listeners or followers to click on that link. But if I create a captivating picture or a video or maybe something comical or create a poll question on Twitter or, you know, maybe do a contest on Instagram, hey, you know, tag three friends and let me know what you think of this upcoming guest and I'll send you a hat or I'll send you a towel or, you know, get your community engaged. But also, you know, if you're putting the effort in to make your episodes and your content worthwhile, you'll see the results. But you have to put the work in. And hey, I started, I have no background in podcasting. I started this literally, I spent about three or four months before I ever posted my first episode researching, okay, what is going to be my workflow? How are my episodes going to be laid out? What am I going to focus on? How am I going to record it? Like, how will I do this? So it can be done. You got to put the work in. As with anything in life that you want to accomplish, you got to put the work in. Well, you have certainly done that. There was one episode that I did want to ask you about because when we sure. first met, I saw it on your phone and that was Joe Buck. And Oh, yeah. And I picked Joe because I know who he is, but also in terms of the people that you have interviewed, they are probably very well known within the golf community, but they may not be as well known outside the golf community. And Joe Buck is sure. one of those people that transcends all sports. First of all, did your preparation for that podcast change or deviate in any way? Because frankly, he's so famous. And then when you got in uh, the interview, was the actual recording interview any different than any of your others? So a buddy of mine, it's really actually very funny how the whole thing happened. A friend of mine that is, we know each other just playing golf locally. When he knew I was starting the podcast, he says, oh, well, I can get you Joe Buck. And, you know, Tom, I haven't released an episode yet. And this guy's telling me he can get me <laughs> Joe Buck, who's called a Super Bowl and, you know, the World Series and everything. And I'm t and the U.S. Open, I'm thinking to myself, I haven't done anything yet. Let's just calm down. So, but eventually I said, hey, are you for real? Can you really get me Joe Buck? And he's like, yeah, you know, my buddy or my brother-in-law. And I can, anyway, I can make it happen. And sure enough, it did. Well, what I did to prepare for Joe Buck, he has a autobiography called Lucky Bastard. And I listened to it twice. I got it on audiobook and listened to it twice. So I basically read his book twice. And then did a deep dive on all of the events that he's called. And we did the episode right before the U.S. Open last year. So I had some questions leading in, but I was very fortunate. I love baseball. I love golf. So I was extremely well prepared for him. And what I did with Joe Buck that I do with every single guest, I try and show them value right away. And I try and show my legitimacy right away by asking different questions, probing questions, and show that I have done my research 
Because I think once you do that, they respect the fact that, okay, this person is interviewing me, has done his work and taken the time. I think that's something I've done with Joe Buck, but I do that with every single guest. And as far as recording it, truthfully, you know, a lot of times if I get a clean phone line, it seems to work out okay. And actually the time that I interviewed Joe Buck, he was out in California looking at colleges with his daughter. And for the most part, the, you know, clean phone call and clean phone line, good reception. And I can kind of tinker around with some of the audio editing in the post and it kind of turns out okay. Well, Ben, unfortunately, we are near the end of our time today, but this has just been a fascinating visit with you. And I guess I wanted to end with where do you hope to take the podcast? Well, I'm kind of chugging along and things are going well. I have a lot of episodes lined up for this year. I have some potential opportunities to do podcasts for some other entities, some other golf organizations where they would like me to kind of take the reins for them there. As far as the back of the range, I don't have any advertising quite yet because, I don't know, I'm not quite ready for that. I'm going to leave it kind of the way it is right now, but I'd like to get more and more listeners, more and more guests, and just keep taking this as far as I can. Well, I hope some of the listeners of this podcast will go and subscribe. And if they want to, where can they go for more information, Ben? Well, the best place to go if you're in front of your computer is just to go to the website, thebackoftherange.com. That will take you to all of the places where the episodes can be listened to, whether that's Apple Podcast or Stitcher or Spotify. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you'll be able to find the back of the range. And we're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. All that information can be found at the website, thebackoftherange.com. So, Ben, thank you so much. I really enjoyed meeting you in Florida, and I've greatly enjoyed this podcast. And frankly, I think you're going to move the needle forward on innovation and compliance, although it may seem like a stretch for you. So thank you so much. (laughs) Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. I appreciate it and hope we can do it again soon. If you're a compliance professional looking for a convenient and effective way to fulfill your continuing education requirements, go to fcpacompliancereport.com slash courses and choose from four hour-long training packages that will keep you current. That's fcpacompliancereport.com slash courses.